Welcome to HB Tuner's Ford Mod Motor Training Part 10. This video we're going to be taking a look at our map calibration tables. We need to understand the core concepts behind the mass airflow calibration curve and then learning how to go into rescale if we've changed our intake or we've changed our mass airflow sensor itself. Now we're going to be looking heavily at our Excel spreadsheet in this video, just looking at the calculator that provided it that's going to be doing automatic rescales based on the difference in your math sizes, also looking at the different data sets we have available, and then just understanding all of the core things that we need to turn off in order to expose the math curve to tune it directly so we don't have our speed density going in and skewing up our airflow reporting. Without further wait, let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at our mass airflow calibration area within our Ford PCM. This is going to be one of the most important things that we calibrate and deal with when we're doing tuning on a Ford. So let's go and open up a calibration file so we can start to dig in and take a look at the core tables and the core things we need to know about in order to dial in our mass airflow sensors. Now, we're gonna go up here into File Open. Now, we're gonna go in here, let's just jump into, uh, I have my course packet for our HP Tuners 2005 to 2010 Mustang saved on my desktop, so I'm in my desktop right here. I'm gonna go into my folder for the course packet and jump into Calibration File Examples. Within the calibration file examples here, we're going to find we have various different files. Some of them are going to be stock, some are going to be turbo or supercharged or different examples I'm providing here so you can have them for reference sake. We take a look, we find that we're going to have a stock 2005 Mustang GT 4.6 liter. This is the file we're going to be taking a look at. We're also going to be referencing a GT 500 file a little bit later on in the video. There's slight differences in the programming and what we're working with within the mass airflow area within our calibration files. The GT500 is actually a simplified uh, uh, mass airflow area to do the calibration compared to a three valve 4.6 liter. So if we know how to tune a 4.6 liter three valve, then we definitely know how to tune a GT500. But let's jump in here and take a look at the areas that we need to go and start to discuss for this video here. So I'm gonna grab that file, click open, and now that file is gonna be open. We can find the name is gonna be uh, showing right here as a file that we have loaded into our VCM editor software. So the first thing I want to do is jump up into engine and then we're going to move from general and then we're going to move into airflow. Now under airflow, we're going to be clicking on general tab and then here under the general, we're going to be moving into our area called math calibration. This whole entire area here relates to doing the mass airflow calibration and all the tables that we need to know in order to successfully calibrate the mass airflow. So let's go in and start to dig into these tables here. Um, the very first table, that we have to go and focus on. This is probably one of the most important tables to calibrate within the PCM. It's gonna be our airflow versus voltage table. Now, this is going to be what we represent the airflow coming from our mass airflow sensor fitted onto the intake track of the engine. So as airflow goes across the sensor, it knows that if we're drawing more airflow in, the voltage is going to be increasing. So the, the, the way the sensor is gonna work, it starts off here approximately zero volts. It goes all the way to five volts. So it's a zero to five volt scale of the output coming from out from the uh, mass airflow sensor. And then what we'll find here is at a given voltage, let's take a look here at 1.09 volts, we're gonna find that it represents what the airflow is going to be at that voltage. This tells the PCM how much volume of airflow is entering the engine. Now this is only gonna be the volume. We still have to account for the density of the air, we'll talk about that in a second. But we'll find here as we move up in voltage, we'll find that that airflow is going to be increasing. And if we take a look here, this is gonna allow us to take a look at a 2D chart. We're gonna find that it's gonna be a nice, smooth, exponential curve as we're looking at the mass airflow sensor here. We always wanna make sure that the MAF curve is gonna look nice and smooth like this. Let's jump back in here. So we'll find as we draw more airflow over the uh, MAF sensor, it outputs a higher voltage, and then it's gonna be doing a direct lookup in the table here. So at 3.4 volts, it's gonna be showing 13.679 pound per minute worth of airflow. I do want to note that we are able to change the unit scale on the table here. So this is going to be all in units of pound per minute. If I simply click up here in the right hand corner, it's going to allow us to go through different various unit scales. Now it's not actually going in and changing the value uh, and, and altering the value. It's going in and changing the unit scale of the value. So depending on what unit scale we're looking at, the numbers will change, but it's all going to be the same values. We haven't edited anything. We're just changing the unit scale. The two most common units that you'll work with within the forward programming or in programming in general is either going to, going to be in grams per second, which is a metric unit scale, or we're going to be working in pound per minute. 
Those are the two most common that I deal with. Um, so you can look at either or whatever you're more familiar with going in and tuning. I usually work with pound per minute because that's what I've been sticking with for forward tuning for many, many years now. So either, either unit scale is... Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.